I was called to um, so today what we are going to do is we are going to try this ECU this uh, Mazda 6 ECU which is PY9 so we are reading it with OBD so we are using Multiproc to read this ECU but we are doing it by OBD so at this point what we do is you can see it has read every details and the calibration on the ECU and even the part number on the ECU so what we are going to do now is we wait for it to finish reading so we can use the multiprog in two ways which means we can do it by obd and also we can do it by bench so my the reason why i'm having this chinese writing is because my multiprog version is in is the chinese version that's why you are seeing it that way but apart from that it will do every work that the global version will do so now we are reading the ECU with the OBD side. So when you are doing the OBD, the only thing you get is the map. And when you use PCM flash, the uh, PCM flash also read it, read only the flash. So PCM flash also read it in the OBD mode. So what we do is after reading the OBD mode, we also read um, the bench mode. Then we do some vein editing so that we can see how best to use this tool. Because with the vein editing, it will affect the file itself. So when you put it on the vehicle, it will, you just read the vein that you've edited onto it. So with this one, I'll wait for it to finish reading and it will take much time. Um, when you are using PCM flash, it doesn't take much time like the way Multiprog takes much time. With Multiprog, most of the ECU reading is a bit slower than the PCM flash unless it has read it before or it has write it before that's where to skip certain sectors but if it is if it has not done it before you have to wait a long time so with this one it to take my time although i've done two x speed like i've speed this video two x it will take my time but what i like about multi progress it will tell you the time that it is used to do all the reading so we wait for it to finish the reading so i really like this tool it can do some of the easy but not all the easy that it tells you that it can do it can do some and it can do others but all depends on how you use the tool so it's now at 23 percent so we wait for it to get to 100 percent then it will tell us the estimated time used so with this one you can even see that it reads and read the calibration data and the cvn date and it also gives you the v number of the vehicle so this one you also get the v number of the vehicle during the obd um, read process but when you are doing it on bench you are, you are not going to get it so um any p py ecu or it's not only py but this ecu is a denso ecu so any of the p so you can use um toyota um you can use toyota iv a ai to do the reading so i'll bring you back so that the video will be a bit quicker so now you can see after bringing you back it's almost at eight something percent it's seven percent so you wait for it to finish the read and you see the estimated time that it's used or let's say the time that it's used so i'll bring you back again after it is done reading so the file that you are reading also is a two megabit two megabytes file so it's almost like the flash the map is also almost like the flash so when you are reading the map it's like you are reading the flash so what i'll do is later i'll compare the one that i read from um, pcm flash to the one that i'm using the multiple to read and see if there will be any difference in the map if there is no different then that means both of them read the exact file so it's almost 100 percent and normally when you are doing ec reading with ponte prog you have to get a strong internet because without internet sometimes it will fail or you, you, you even lose your data 
yeah with a strong internet it will flow so now it is 100 percent done so i'll wait for it to um move away from the readings section so it is almost, almost done so normally when you are doing um the ecu reading but if it is a cheap reading you really do not need internet that much like when you are doing ec reading so you can see i spent 26 minutes 51 uh, 51 seconds you can see the time i spent and now i have to turn off my godak and disconnect it then now i'm going to connect it i'm going to connect the multiprog itself and turn it on so that now i'm coming to read it by bench so during bench process you have to power on the multiprog but if you are doing obd you have to power your godak or your car so now you can see the multiprog is connected successfully so now i'm going to read the eprom and i might get error because i didn't turn on my godak but i'll turn on the godak because normally uh, the multiprog doesn't stand you can see the error there the red chinese thing may everything uh, means error so what i'll do is now i have to turn on my godak so that i'll be able to so let me try the read again and you can see now because i've turned on the good act, so it, it doesn't send it, it sends power to the ecu whenever it needs to be read it, it needs to be read so you can see that now it has sent power to the ecu and it is reading it and you can see i've read my eprom successfully and you can see my vin number so i can easily edit the vin number and i'll rewrite it so the original v number ends with 73 73 so what i'll do you can see that when i did the obd section it got 73 and you can see i used only one minute so now i'm going to read the flash also then i'll edit the vein then rewrite the vein onto the system so now i'm reading it you can see now it has sent power to the godak to turn on so that can read from the issue so it only sends power during reading process and uh, writing process so if you are not in a um, reading mode you will not get any power on the obd or on the multiprog side unless it is reading or it is writing that's when it sends power to the unit so with this one um, i'll wait for it to read the flash and you can see during the flash reading process, it tells me the chip ID. Where you see the CPU and the Chinese rating means the chip ID, which is SH72543. So that's the chip ID. So now it's almost done with the flash. And always remember when you are doing either bench, OBD, or boot, you need to connect to internet. So far as you are using ecu function you need to connect to the internet so there is the flash data now so i'll save that one so you can see the flash it also used two minutes 47 seconds and 39 milliseconds so it gives you the operation time so now i'll save the data both of them and i'll do the editing on the i'll save both of them with the view number so now I'll go and save the EEPROM also and add the VIN number to it. So what I'll do is now I'm coming to edit it. So I'll change the 3 to 2, put the 3s to 2. Then I'll search if I can get any VIN number again in it. Or if I like, I can go to search and type in the VIN number. Then I'll just be changing it. So you can see I'm having, I'm not having... The VIN number again in it so i'll do the changes i'll do the change you can see how they're breaking the VIN numbers down so i'll change them into two all the threes will change into two so that when we read it again now the VIN number will be 72 instead of 73 so now that i have the file if i'm i'm back to write it to the original stage i'll just load the that i haven't write it so now that i've done with the editing let me see if i can find some of the number in the flash 
then I will also change them so that after writing it anytime you place it on the car and will you see the addicted VIN number so with this one that I'm done let me write the VIN, let me write the EEPROM addicted the modified EEPROM so as at this point it's now connecting to the internet then the moment it is done connecting the internet you see it, it tells me the chip id and starts to read so now it's writing the addicted file onto the ecu then from the so the moment it sends the um, power or voltage to the it took 50 uh, 10 seconds because some of the sectors were skipped so i'll rewrite it again to make sure everything is okay then you can see that it says so because it has written the edited version already you can see how quickly it is done writing so now okay i read it again to verify that my right was right so i'll go to obd and read it so at this point i have to disconnect the power and i have to connect the good the power to the good rather so that uh, it will be connected in obd mode so now i'll do the read in the obd mode and the vin number will be changed so i'll just skip it and let's check the vin number so it's now connecting to the internet but just that sometimes it takes much time So now what I'll do is uh, I'll just wait for it to finish connecting and I'll wait for it to connect to the internet and now it is reading so that means it has connected to the internet I, said, I just want to show you the view number but I'll bring you back when it is done reading now it is done reading you can see instead of 73 now it is 72 so that tells me that my view number editing is done successfully so with this one um, what I can also do is um, I can so I'm trying to see if I can find the I'm trying to see if I can find the VIN in so this one what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare the file with the one that I read with the PCM flash so I'm coming to compare the PCM flash file um, with the one that I've read with this so you can see both of the files are okay because I loaded the file that I read first and you can see there is no difference in them they have zero difference so that means they are the same read so if I want to go back to the edit I can go on back now I'm using the bench mode and I'm just going to load you can see anytime you see the blue lines which shows that I've selected the file from a place and it shows you the directory so now i'm writing the original file on it i'm writing the original file back to it so that i'll get the correct v number which is 73 which is 73 so you can see the writing has been done i'm really only doing the eprom editing so the moment the right is done then that means if i read the eprom again i will i should be fine I, I should get the correct v number in it which was 73 so now i'm coming to read the v number again <coughs> so now i'm coming to read the v number again so now that um i have connected it so i'm using the obd side to read and see that the vein is changed so i'll just read them then i'll bring you back so the moment it is done reading so i'll wait for it to start reading then you see that the vein number has changed back to three So I'll just wait for it to finish connecting. You can see now the VIN number has changed back to three. So 
scope i can just cancel it and i'm using my scope uh, my scan tool to read it so first i'm going to read it so that you see the correct v number and after i changed it so this was the v number after i changed it that was the 72 so now that i've written it back to the original file now that i've written it back to the original file now i'm coming to read it and it has to change to 73 so you can see it's still 72 so now i'll go to read again on my scan to to read it so now that I'm, I'm done writing the data onto it, now I'm coming to read again. So click on the read to read the VIN number again. So that I get the VIN number of the new of the new file that I've written. So I'll just wait for it to finish reading. And you can see I'll go to yes and you see that the when that comes up will be 72 you can see it comes back as the original vein so let me do the read again and you see that it comes up as 73 yes so this is the original vein thank you for watching subscribe to my channel for more videos